Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Let us continue with Owlcation article called the the stupidity of Ayn Rand, was it? We're down in the ethics area, and we're about the jumping on a grenade stuff, which is how we ended the last video. Quote, jumping on a grenade and saving everybody else's life is an immoral act, and I fail to see why it wouldn't be using Rand's own philosophy. So just to recap, if you were in a situation where you're going to die, and your choice is you die, or you and more people die, that would be perfectly fine for you to jump on the grenade, okay, in that situation. Now, uh, asking about jumping on grenades is not a guide to acting in life. We cannot sit around <clears throat> and all figure out what we think of a grenade falling in the middle of us. <clears throat> and who would do what and what would be virtuous. That's stupid. Grenades don't fall in the middle of us. Why do altruists always do this? Why do they always have some sort of a catastrophe or emergency that they have to postulate to do their ethics in? Why can't they say a man was shipwrecked on a desert island? What was the moral thing for him to do? Why do they have nothing to say about a man alone in this universe? One man by himself in the universe. They have nothing to say to you. Because they're collectivists. They have nothing to say but the group think. So, um, of course the grenade thing is exactly how they would want to address the issue. Okay. She considers, now here, this sentence just shows you how naked they are. Quote, she considers altruism to be immoral, and you don't get more altruistic than jumping on a grenade. That's true. It's just about as altruistic as you can get, especially if it wasn't necessary. <laughs> that would be especially altruistic. In fact, that might be the only way it could actually be altruistic, because otherwise it would be utilitarian in some way, right? Right? And according to objectivists, it would be ethical for you to spend your life in a way that saved other people if the option was your life is done. Well, then do something with it that, that saves people that you value or does something for valuable people that around you. Okay. Another important thing that fans of Rand don't get about this objection is that there is a difference between something I value like I value my car, and a moral value. Well, I'll tell you what. Moral values come from valuing yourself. Okay? So, not really. Not really. You're not really. There's really no distinction to make. Okay? Equality is a moral value. No, no, no. I value myself. Okay? So a king or a millionaire who thinks he's better than me because he has more money or more power, uh, I think is wrong. Okay? I value myself equal to any king. Equal to any man. I'm equal to any man. Okay? That is what that means. It does not mean that you have to have the same amount of money as somebody else or something like that. Equality. What do you mean by equality? What do you mean by equality? You are equal to any man on this planet. You, it doesn't matter how much money they have. You're still equal to them. You're legally equal. They're the same. They're, humans are all the same. No one can own anybody else. <clears throat> so no, equality is not a moral value. Equality is just an idea. It's a ridiculous idea. It's, it just doesn't apply. You, you have to apply equality to something. For, for, for the... You know, that shows the depth of thinking of people like this, that they latch on to ideas like equality. It's like equality of what? And then they just screech their head off and say, equality, equality, you know? It's a platonic ideal. It's a floating abstraction, isn't it? It's a platonic floating abstraction for them. Equality, right? Okay. Liberty, altruism... And justice are abstract moral values. And you see, no, liberty is, there's nothing abstract about liberty. Liberty means I'll do what I want. 
And if you come over to me or near me and try to obstruct me, you will be interfering with my liberty. There's nothing abstract about it. It's a very concrete thing. What's the other thing that he thinks is abstract? Altruism. Nothing, nothing abstract about altruism. Altruism is when you give up your life or part of it for no good reason. And justice. Justice is not particularly abstract. It's abstract if you if you omit the measurements, but show me an instance of justice is not abstract. An instance of justice is like a, a thief getting tackled by somebody in front of a store as he tries to run out or something like that. An instance of justice is not abstract. So no, none of those things are abstract, you moron. So liberty, altruism, and justice are abstract moral values. Wrong, not true. Uh, and liberties... Is it a moral value? It's a value. It's a value on which morality is based. So I don't think it's a moral value. What would a moral value be? Um, well, a more, you could have a moral value, but liberty is deeper than a moral value. So uh, I, I, I guess you could have a moral value. God, reading these people just spins your head, doesn't it? Oh, you don't want to give them an inch on terminology in case they might do something weird with it. Uh, you know, and as I think about it, I think moral value. No, that's a reasonable term, isn't it? A moral value. You could have a moral value, right? <laughs> but I don't want to give them an inch, you know? Because you don't know what they're going to do. Uh, you, can sim you simply cannot derive moral, abstract moral values from physical facts about the world. Where else are you going to get them? Where did they come from? Where did they come from? Okay, so all the examples I gave of why it's not abstract, why it's actually concrete, hold and destroy his argument. My argument holds. Uh, the, the physical facts about the world are the only place you can get anything at all. The physical facts about the world are the only thing that exists. So, of course, that's, that's the only thing that justice, liberty, and altruism could concern, good or bad. All right, another paragraph destroyed. David Hume would object to Rand thusly, quote, After he had completely destroyed her with the is-ought fallacy, which we just completely dispensed with, he would tell her that he believed that the foundation of morality is derived from what? Where do we get the foundation of morality? Because Ayn Rand says that on a desert island you'd have to think in order to survive. So your survival and preserving your survival is the goal of morality, and the method of doing that is looking at morality and thinking. That's what Ayn Rand would say morality is. And what does he say? He says, the foundation of morality is derived from moral intuitions that we as human beings all share. So it's just innate to us. Now all you need to do is find one thug or one serial killer who runs around killing people and doing bad things and your whole argument's refuted. So that's super, super lame. Super lame. A person who does not share these moral intuitions is morally blind. Like a colorblind person cannot see collar. So what do we do with those people? Hume would probably consider someone who lived by Rand's philosophy with no guilt or regret a sociopath. So you just skip over the question of what we do with the people that are colorblind <coughs> and uh, don't agree with your uh, view of reality. You just skip over it. You just say there would be those people. So anyway, on to what Hume would probably consider someone who lived by Rand's philosophy. He would probably... No, it says with no guilt or regret. Hume would probably consider someone who lived by Rand's philosophy with no guilt or regret a sociopath. Well, anybody who lived with no guilt or regret would be a sociopath. But if you're trying to imply that living by Rand's philosophy means living with no guilt or regret, then you are insane. You would have guilt for anything you earned guilt for. And you would not accept, of course, any guilt which was not earned. Was that what he means by no guilt? So you have to accept unearned guilt or else there's no guilt. False dichotomy. You should accept only guilt that you have earned. Now, where have we gotten to? Uh, own moral intrinsic human values. We're not down there. 
Someone who lived by Rand's philosophy, no guilt. Okay. <clears throat> the funny thing is that Rand bases her own morality on one of these intrinsic human values, and that value is being human itself. It's just one of... Okay. Being human itself is just one? Okay. Both Rand and her arch enemy Immanuel Kant start their moral philosophy from the same place. They do? Immanuel Kant believed in the inviolability of the individual human being in their mind? I don't think so. I think that Kant said that, that the mind is cut off from reality and can't access it. Rand says that the mind is riveted on to reality through the senses and has no access to anything but reality. This does not sound like they come from the same place. Okay, they both, uh, they both base their morality on the idea that every human being is intrinsically valuable. Kant forms the basis of his morality as... Now, how do you know that every human being is intrinsically moral, more valuable if you don't even have access to the real reality? How do you know anything about human beings at all, or yourself? So Kant's philosophy just wipes out your ability to have beliefs like you say you claim he has. He believes in the, in the value of each individual, right? Mm, in what reality? In what realm? What is an individual? What's, it's, what's your opinion of what an individual is? What's your reality of an individual? My perception of an individual is different from yours. See? You cannot defend that statement with Kant's philosophy. Give me a break. That's stupid. Okay, where are we? They both use that Kant forms the basis of his morality as acting as a free and rational person and on always treating people not as a means to an end but as ends in themselves. Just That's just a cheap, stupid rationalization. You can get there easier and with less... Uh, nonsense by saying that you cannot force people to do things. Just say that. You cannot force people to do things. It's illegal to force people to do things. Anything. You can't force things on people. Okay. Just say that and you're done with it. You don't have to do this treating people as a means or an end garbage like that. Ethically, you would say uh, deal voluntarily with people. <clears throat> You don't need that sort of injunction which is full of all kinds of garbage and just confuses the whole subject. It doesn't help anybody. This uh, moral agent, what is it, that uh, treating people as an end in themselves. Rand flips this on its head and says that human beings should value themselves above all other people. And altruism is allowing yourself to become the means to other people's ends. Yes, that is what altruism is. People who are altruists are tools. Do you feel good being a tool? Be an objectivist and be cool, boys and girls. Okay, there's a huge logical problem with this. Really, do enlighten us. Kant says that we have a duty to the rest of humanity. And that duty is to help our fellow man to be as free as possible. Which fellow man? The ones that also have a duty to help their fellow men to be free? And which ones are they supposed to help? The ones that are supposed to help their fellow men to be free? And are you part of this? Do you get to be free? No, you do not get freedom. You just get duty. You just get the duty to help other people. Where does the freedom ever come in? The freedom's just a rhetorical nonsense just thrown in there to distract people with a low IQ. It's duty that he's selling. He's selling duty. Okay? Duty and duty. Okay? Both. That's what he's selling you. To be as free as possible, she says. I'll clue you in here right now. Everybody is selling freedom. Okay? Karl Marx told the workers to cast off their chains and embrace freedom. Right? everybody's selling freedom, right? All, uh, the Muslims are selling the freedom to worship the one and true God, right? Everybody's selling freedom, okay? It's what ideas are behind freedom. Kant is selling freedom too, did you hear? Kant's got freedom for sale. He wants everyone to maximize everybody else's freedom, did you hear? And now when you build his societies, it always turns out like either Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany or some version of that. So... Maybe we could reevaluate our theory? Maybe? 
When we treat others as ends in themselves, we validate their intrinsic value as human beings, and therefore validate our own value. Well, now I can just go get my own value validated down at the corner store because I buy a soda. Okay, I don't need your fucking logic to validate shit. What does that mean to validate stuff? Why would I care if any of this was validated or not, and what would it matter if it wasn't validated? Let's just see how dangerous it would be if this was not validated. When we treat others as ends in themselves, we validate their intrinsic value as human beings. So, if we fail to treat others as ends in themselves, if we use them as a means towards some end, then we are not validating their intrinsic value as human beings, and therefore we're not validating our own value. Okay, so we don't validate our own value if we don't treat others... Okay, so if we don't treat someone as an end in... If we use somebody, then it invalidates our own value. How? I didn't follow the logic there. Is that a bald assertion? If we, you use someone, it invalidates your own value. How? I don't see, I don't see how that follows. Okay, does not follow. Thank you. If we treat people as Rand would have us treat them, then we are invalidating the very value that she is basing her whole morality on in its first place. Which, which is, it'd be nice if you had told me, because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. If we treat people as Rand would have us treat them, now the way that Rand would have us treat them is voluntarily. They would only interact with you voluntarily. If they want to interact with you, if you can convince them, then you can interact with them. So if we treat people voluntarily, then we are invalidating the very value she is basing her whole morality on in the first place. Which is what? I can't finish the thought because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. To not value the needs and lives of others as much as our own is to invalidate the entire idea that all human individuals have intrinsic value. Okay, well, um, maybe the word intrinsic value is just nonsense and you need to give up on it, but <clears throat> where in Rand does she not value everybody else's lives as her own? I mean, she, every, humans have equality. There aren't, like, slaves and masters. Is that what you mean by that? Or do you mean that I have to share my food and my clothing and I never get to eat a piece of cake because somewhere someone in the world needs it more than me? Because if that's what you mean by ev valuing everyone equally to me, then I never get to have any comfort because there's someone in the world that needs it more than me. So then I sacrifice and destroy my life. So you mustn't mean that, must you? What must you mean? To not value the needs and lives as of others as much as our own is to invalidate the entire idea that all human individuals have intrinsic value. You know, just a note to anybody besides this person, when you find yourself using a word over and over in a sentence, you might realize that you don't understand what that word means, and you're using it for different stuff. And you might need to hammer down a definition. Doing a definition is very useful in your thinking, and it stops nonsense like this. Valuing the value makes the valuer valued by his value, which is a valuable value. Brilliant. That's just brilliant logic. Okay. So we don't want to value the value because it invalidates the entire value of being intrinsically valuable. Okay. We cannot say that every human being is subjectively, intrinsically valuable to themselves. Subjectively, intrinsically. Now, intrinsic and subjective shouldn't really go together in the same sentence. You'll create like a little black hole or something. If it's intrinsic, that means it's it's not subjective. And it's, if it's subjective, that means it's not intrinsic. So you're saying both of them together? Jesus, what a junky thinker. <clears throat> a human being is 
is subjectively intrinsically valuable to themselves because that is not objective. Yeah, okay, now we agree on that at least. Yeah, being those three things together is not objective. And it throws Rand's entire claims of an objective philosophy right out of the window. Why does it? We cannot say that every human being is subjectively, intrinsically valuable to themselves. God, such word salad. We cannot say that because that is not objective. Correct. And it throws Rand's entire claims of an objective philosophy right out the window. What? And it throws Rand's entire claims of an objective philosophy right out the window. That happened pretty quick there. In fact, I think all that maneuver right there of out the window stuff, I think all that happened after the word and. I'm going to give this sentence one more go. We cannot say that every human being is subjectively intrinsically valuable to themselves because that is not objective. And it throws Rand's entire claims of an objective philosophy right out the window. All right. I've got to move on because I don't know what the hell is going on here. It is also worth noting that Rand straw mans Kant, Kant, Immanuel Kant, yet again when she addresses the idea of duty in her writing. Quote, the meaning of the term duty is the moral necessity to perform certain actions for no reason other than obedience to some higher authority without regard to any personal goal, motive, desire, or interest, end quote. Okay, is that a reasonable definition of duty or not? I mean, clearly it is. Um, no. I just explained what the point of duty is to Kant. Did you? It wasn't really that clear. And it is the same value that Rand based her philosophy on, but in Kant's case, at least he is logically consistent. Oh, saying that you have no connection to reality is logically consistent? He, can, he has no basis for logical consistency. He dispenses with logical consistency. He declares that you cannot access reality to test logical consistency. So to then say that he is logically consistent as his feature is just bizarre. Just re bizarre. And isn't her philosophy supposed to be based on reason only, not motives, desires, or interests? Ooh, checkmate, or what? I don't know what to say to that. That's stupid. Oh, what have you proven? What did you prove there, that it wasn't based on reason, or that it's based on something besides reason? It also has motives, desires, and interests in it? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, the is-ought dichotomy, for example, right? It should be reason alone that allows us to get from an is to an ought. We shouldn't have to have the motives, desires, or interests of a living being. We should have reason alone. Isn't Rand based on reason alone? Why does she have to bring in the motives, desires, and interests of living entities? How silly of her to have a philosophy based around living entities. <clears throat> oh, God. Okay, part three... Politics. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to smoke a second here and just let you consider the fact that this isn't easy and you should either be patronizing me or considering doubling your Patreon or tripling it or whatever and, uh, and also sharing to people on Facebook and letting them know and saying, hey, let's get Cropper some support and keep him active and keep these videos coming. Uh, now, I don't know how long I can stand this stuff. You know, I'm going to be doing other stuff and interviews and stuff and debates and whatever. We'll be doing all kinds of stuff. I've just gotten back in the saddle, and I don't know if I'm going to stay in the saddle. It depends if I can make some money. I see Charles, too, over there making a lot of money on Patreon, and I said, how many damn objectivists are there out there? What the hell? So here I am. Uh, you know, if, you're not, if I can't make any money, if, like, seriously, if I'm going to make 20 or $30 a week on it, how can I spend a bunch of time on it? But we'll see. We'll see what develops. So 
All right, if you're watching this, then you're one of the guys that should probably help out a bit. Now, think about that while I relax for a second, and then we will go with part three, politics. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> Rand supports capitalism because it is the most free system. The freest system, could we say? I don't really have a problem with this argument per se, but I do question Rand's version of freedom. Like I said, everybody's selling freedom. To Rand, freedom means being able to do what you want when you want to do it. No. No. No, 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 no. To Rand, freedom means being able to do anything you want as long as you don't infringe other people's freedom to do anything they want. And they can't infringe on your freedom either. Why is that such a difficult concept for these people? I just don't see why that's so damn difficult to grasp. Uh, to Rand, freedom means being able to do anything. There are many philosophers who share this view, including David Hume, but it isn't the only version of freedom out there. A second version of freedom is freedom based on autonomy. That means being able to act, and that's what RANS is, that you can act. Nobody can stop you, you're free to act. And you can't stop other people from acting. That's RANS, you have autonomy. And that version is the idea that freedom doesn't mean simply having your desires fulfilled, Whoever said that? Rand didn't say that. Rand simply said you have the freedom to do as you pleased as long as you don't hurt other people. When did anybody ever mention fulfilling desires? When, when did everybody mention any of that? So it doesn't simply mean having your desires fulfilled, which we simply pulled out of thin air, and who knows where it came from, but also maximizing the number of options you have to pursue whatever goals you may want to pursue. So now we've got options and goals and we can do these pursuits. Where the hell did all that come from? What is the idea of freedom? Freedom. Why does Ayn Rand not give you uh, options to pursue goals you want to pursue? Why doesn't Rand give you those? You didn't make a very good case for that at all. It's not simply being able to do anything you want to do any time, but maximize the options you can pursue for whatever goals you want to pursue, as opposed to doing anything you want anytime. Is that the... So, as many options for as many goals as you want to pursue, or do anything you want anytime? That's just a stupid dichotomy. That's stupid two options. And besides, Rand isn't the one option. Rand says, you can't hurt other people, now go mind your own business. And you say, but I want opportunities. When what was it? You want opportunities? And you want to maximize your... I want to maximize my options and pursue my goals. And Rand says, you're free, go do whatever you want, you stupid little unicorn ninny. <laughs> Get out of here, Jesus Christ. Okay. I already addressed this question in my hub, How to Build a State. Ladies and gentlemen, I've addressed that question in my video, The Objectivist State Commands You. So go watch that if you want to know how to build a state. Or why should the rich pay higher taxes? And I think, and oh, and I will link that hub at the end of this one so I don't have to address a very long argument over again. Another main problem I have with Rand's view is that all her political arguments result from a false dichotomy. Please, what is the false dichotomy in lightness? She states over and over again that you really only have two choices, capitalism and socialism. Yes, it's freedom and physical force. Either we have freedom or we have physical force. Yes, that's our basic option. The problem with this is you obviously don't. 
If that is the case, then every developed country in the world, including the United States, is a socialist country. You starting to wake up? Yes, that's true. Every nation in the world is a mixed economy of some time, you of some kind. You're absolutely correct about that. So yes, you're right. Uh, socialism, or collectivism if you prefer, and capitalism have coexisted in the United States government since the beginning. Correct. So you've got that, all right. We have a lot of values in our society that contradict each other. Correct. We respect the rule of law, but most people think that there are times when breaking the law is justified. We believe the individual we believe in individuality, but we also believe in equal opportunity. Well, where do you think uh, the idea for equal opportunity comes from? Do you think it comes from collectivism? It's either based in individuality or it's not a valid value. Where do you think it comes from? Equal opportunity. It must come from the fact that the individual is important and they all individuals should have the right to compete equally in society. That must be the basis of it, is individualism. What else would it be? Collectivism of some kind? Okay. So as We believe in individuality, but we also believe in, as if you can't believe in individuality and have equal opportunity. Of course, they don't mean that. They mean equality of outcome. Right? Anybody, there's, anytime there's a disequality of outcome, there's a millionaire here and a guy pushing a shopping cart down the street, they are going to say that there was an unequal opportunity. You see? If, the, if everyone had utterly perfect, platonically perfect though, platonically perfect opportunity, then everybody's neurons would be equal to everybody's. Everybody's parents would be just as good as everybody's. Then we would all have the same outcome, right? But we don't have equal opportunity. Platonically equal opportunity, right? You know, it's just junky thinking. You know, it's like, what does it mean to have equal opportunity? It either means that everybody can do as they please, and no one can interfere with them. You have the equal opportunity to do as you please with your life and convince other people to deal with you. Or it means absolute total communism. <laughs> Which one do you think it means? Oh, Rand herself has this problem in her philosophy. She says that force is unjustified, but gives us no real criteria to judge this on. Go on. So when would you say force is justified? When would, I mean, besides defending yourself, what, when would you use force? The, oh, it doesn't even address it, just goes on. Then she turns around and addresses the idea of anarchy. Oh, she's just wild, turning in every direction, kind of like you. <clears throat> she says that force is unjustified, but gives no real criteria to judge this on. Okay, so, so tell us why... It's justified then. No, 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 not going to do it. All right. Uh, but on to anarchy. Then she turns around and addresses the idea of anarchy. <coughs> Rand believes that anarchy... Rand, oh, Rand believes in a night watchman state, and this basically means the government can use force when it benefits the rich. Is that what the night watchman state was? I thought the night watchman state used force to protect people against the initiation of force. No, it basically uses... Uh, a white, the Night Watchman State basically means that the government can use force when it benefits the rich, but cannot do so when it benefits the poor. So this person is transparently a Marxist. Because everything is based on the rich and the poor. Uh, what, now... He's counting on his audience having no clue at all of what the Night Watchman state is and never finding out. And perhaps his audience is that dumb and that incurious. I hope so. I kind of hope so. I, I mean, I hope that reasonable, semi-intelligent people aren't reading this garbage and thinking they're getting anything out of it. Uh, this really makes no sense whatsoever for a night watchman state to behave in such a way that 
it benefits only the rich and not the poor. Just makes no sense whatsoever, he says. Well, that's not the night watchman state. You were just attacking a straw man. To Rand, taxation is theft. But then what is the debt owed for the benefits society gives us? What benefits does society give us? We have to buy everything from society tooth and nail. We have to purchase everything we get from society. What benefits does society give us? Uh, we get tremendous benefits through trade. Society gives us nothing. If you work and earn money so that your work has contributed and helped other people, you earn money by helping other people, then you can take that little voucher that says you helped other people and you can go say, I would like to cash this in. And they'll say, oh, you helped somebody? Here, yes, you can, you can, you can participate in our economy if you've helped somebody. That's what money is. Money is a little voucher that says you've been helping people. Now, I know the government prints money. They shouldn't be able to do that. And I know that money's made of paper, and it shouldn't be. It should be based on gold. And I know that people can get money through taxation, and that shouldn't be the case. Money should be a little voucher that says you've benefited people. In fact, if, if taxation were voluntary, I'll stop for a second on that. If taxation were voluntary then every money voucher the government was given would have been given voluntarily because the people said, I feel like they've benefited me. I like the benefits I'm getting. I like the police station. I like the cars the police are driving. It's happy for me that they have these nice cars or whatever you feel. Every single dollar the government got would be a voucher of support. You know, As it is, money's a little bit messy, but really what money means is you've been helping other people by working. Okay, you've done work. You've benefited somebody. So now you get to participate in this thing we call the economy. You're welcome to come in if you do some work first. Okay? That's what uh that's what the rich and the poor is. That's what taxation and theft. What are we on? Taxation and theft? Oh, benefits from living in society. Yeah, there's society for you. Do some work in society and you'll get a voucher to participate. <coughs> he says, like roads, military protection, police. Okay, roads, military protection, and police are not in the same category. Roads are a separate thing. Shows how clueless a Marxist is. Once again, my previous hub address is much greater detail. Things because Rand never does. Are we done? Oh, thank God. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're getting near the end of my video time anyways. Please uh, join me for future escapades, and um, uh, there's a few more guys I need to get after. I, I watched a couple videos by Young Wrecker, or what's the guy, the black guy who, or Young, what's his name? Uh, is it one of these? Oh, I can't remember his name. I watched some videos by him, and I couldn't figure, I couldn't find a lot that was no good in him. I mean, I know he's an anarchist, but he didn't say anything in a video that he did about college debt, for example, that I took exception to. I liked him. I really like him. But I'm sure that there's something I'll find. And he's the one that was confused about Ayn Rand in, because of the guy that was confused about Ayn Rand telling him about Ayn Rand. And he's like, why all these people bringing Ayn Rand to me? All right. So uh, I'm going to be doing more videos about all these things. Uh, patronize me. Whew, done with that article. Uh, I hope there's not a ton of that stuff out there on the internet, but um, it's good to wade through it and, and, and at least have a resource available for people that want to know what's going on with it.